to what is good we're back in this thing today we're gonna be going over this paper rip freeze frame transition i saw Susie made it do it a bunch in his little peep music videos a bunch of people recommended it on uh, my live stream on twitch so if you're not following me on twitch definitely go do that basically every friday i live stream there and uh people just recommend music videos and send links in chat and then we watch them they could be yours they could be other people's and uh we kind of just react to them anyway someone sent the little peep music video that Susie did i really thought that paper rip effect was cool and i wanted to replicate it so that's what we're going to be doing today so definitely shout out him go follow him he watches the channel every once in a while he pops in the live streams so shout out suzy i'll have his link of his ig in the description if you guys are new here what i do is a lot of music video tutorial breakdowns effects behind the scenes vlogs i'm gonna start doing a lot more stuff to kind of just different content instead of tutorials i'm gonna be doing vlogs behind the scenes i'm moving to la um at the end of this month actually for two months i think that's the first time you guys on youtube are hearing about it if you were part of my discord or follow me on ig you would have already known that so i'll have those links below definitely go follow me on ig i need you guys to do that my ig is a little lacking compared to my youtube uh i share a lot of personal stuff we do just polls a bunch of different stuff and then the discord the discord i just go and we just chat in the, the rooms while we're editing live stream our screens it's pretty cool so definitely go check those out but yeah i'm gonna be moving to the team house of split mind i'm the creative director for them it's a producer collective and we're just gonna work on artist development for the next few months definitely be a really cool journey and i want to bring you guys along with it so let me know in the comments if you guys are interested in that other than just tutorials i'll still have tutorials planned and stuff so you guys are always learning but i want to bring it more into the industry side just because i have the cool opportunity of doing this so if you're interested in any of that definitely be sure to subscribe and if you haven't already like and comment it really does help push my content to other people that want to see my kind of content music video directors editors just people that are in this field so uh let's go ahead and aim 500 likes and 100 comments you guys have been absolutely killing it recently so that would be greatly appreciated if you could take a second and do that if you want to support the channel even more you can go over to briandelmata.com check out my texture pack we're actually going to be using it in this fact that we're doing today uh we're going to be using the ultimate texture bundle and i think it's just very versatile i'll have a link to that as well as a playlist of all the paper rip effects that i've done so far with it i think we're getting close to 20 overall tutorials so there's no shortage of effects you can do with this pack obviously there's endless amounts you can make your own but the 20 that i have is just a good starting spot for you guys sheesh i know we've been talking for a while uh let's get into this video and break down this effect all right so i have a marker where i have two of the effects that i thought were cool this one right here where he kind of just zooms in as it rips and honestly he does this with real paper and I thought it wasn't going to be really possible with my pack, but I, I found a way to finesse it and it looks pretty damn similar. So I'm excited to be able to share that with you guys. And then here's another one that I thought was real cool. Just that rip out. So basically what you need to do is you need to find your clip. And if you want to do the transition, I'm going to do it at the last frame of the clip. So what I went ahead and did is just found the last frame in this clip and then cut it so I knew where it was at. Or you could add a marker. But basically go to the last frame, create a screenshot and save it somewhere where you can find it. And then go ahead and open that up in Photoshop. And I'm just going to unlock this layer so it's a layer that you can move around and edit. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into my texture pack, go to the paper textures folder. And I'm just going to find a paper texture that I think is nice and fits the style. For this one, I kind of want a decent amount of scratches. I just think it would look cool. Maybe something like maybe something like this one would look cool. So this is black scratch one. Drag that on. And then I'm just going to scale it up to fit the overall image all the way. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go to image adjustments, hue and saturation. I always like to Turning on the color sometimes uh sometimes you don't need to it's a cool way of adding a specific color into your overlay but uh that's why i kept it with some color but i'm just going to go ahead and turn the saturation down all the way and then i'm going to go to layers blending options and go to screen and then i'm just going to position it so some of the rips are a little bit different just so i like the way the scratches lay and stuff on our subject and i think that looks pretty cool and then i'm also just going to go to image adjustments curves play around with the paper effect here kind of just make the overlay pop a little bit more and just look a little bit more like i wanted it to and then we're going to go ahead and go into paper rips and folds i'm going to go into paper rips and then i'm going to bring in this paper texture and all i'm going to do is just scale it all the way up so it fits the whole screen and then i'm going to go ahead and put it behind our image and i'm going to go to our image here go to noise add a little bit of noise i think it just sells the paper effect a little bit more i'm going to turn off monochromatic meaning that there's going to be color in the noise and then i'm also going to go go to image adjustments on our image layer and go to photo filter and then just bring in some like brownish filter that way it kind of just adds a little bit more of that printed paper look and just adds a little bit of warmth everything that i just did was pretty much optional besides the paper uh overlays but i just think it adds a little bit of sauce to it and then i'm going to go ahead and merge 
our layers. That way it makes it into one layer. So you, when you start erasing, it will have the paper behind it. And then the eraser I'm gonna be using is the Kyle's Natural Light Eraser from the Mega Pack. I'll have that link below. I use it all the time. I think it's a great eraser. And then I'm just gonna go to the spots where it looks like the paper's ripped already. And then just erase out here. This is kind of like just the first step. And then I'm also gonna go to the paper rips layer, the white layer behind and erase a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna, just so I can see what I'm doing behind, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that layer and make it black just so you can see it go all the way through and then go to the paper rips and rips again and then just erase so there's a little bit of white on the outside and then that so it looks like it's ripped there and then i'm just gonna find all the spots in the photo that look like that right off the bat and just kind of sauce them up a bit again this this step's pretty optional i just think it looks a little bit better you can see now it has that little bit of rip look and realistically you can add this wherever you don't have to just match where the paper's doing it but i i find it best that to do it there because then it just looks a little bit more natural again this is a pretty fast effect so i do like to spend a little bit extra time on it just tweaking these little spots just selling the effect a little bit more and honestly that's not even that noticeable what we just did so uh if you don't want to spend the time don't go ahead and do that but then i'm going to go ahead and start ripping the paper or start erasing the subject probably towards his head and then just work out each way so i think an eraser the size like five or six for my case looks good and then i'm just gonna follow the outline of him kind of close but not really that close and then maybe something like that for six and then i'm gonna go ahead and go down to five and then go a little bit off track each way just add a little bit extra erasing kind of make it look like it's scratched back and forth and then i go even one more step down to four and add a little bit of extra stuff just around here you can even go off a little bit it's kind of like that like crumble look that uh you get when you actually drag like a pair of scissors or something through the paper because that's i'm sure what he did and then to go one step even further i go to paper rips layer or the white layer bring up the brush to something like seven and then just erase some of these parts so it's going to like look like it's going completely through you know when you actually rip too hard on paper and then sometimes i just play with it see what looks good and then what i go ahead and do is i just do this as one frame then click Control j turn off that background layer so that's one that's our first layer and i'm gonna name that i'm gonna name this one too and then i just go ahead and keep on adding on keep on adding on to the overall effect i'm gonna go a little bit each way and then again just touching it up with those scratches at size five and at four i think adding the ones at different sizes really do help sell it so it looks a little bit more realistic and then going through with this paper on that paper ripple layer, erase the white and just go ahead and do that in some spots. And then again, duplicating that layer, turning off that and then going to three. And this is where the process gets a little bit repetitive, but you can try changing it up, like adding a little bit of streak there and like then making it thick in some spots, you know, make it your own, make it look unique. But I always preach again, going through adding these spots where it looks like the ripped all the way through the paper. I think that's what really sells it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this duplicate it, add the fourth one and go ahead and finish it up here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it to a fifth one, even though we're all the way through. I noticed what he does, and I think it looks pretty cool, is he kind of goes through and does it either on the outside or the inside, where it has a little bit more rips, just like all the way through with one layer. So this is gonna be like one, just one full, uh, just this layer is gonna go all the way through or all the way around in just this one layer. Like you're gonna go all the way around. You can just go as crazy with this as you want. I'm gonna go both inside and outside for this one. I'm gonna add some spots that are like really scratched up and some that are not that scratched up. And then for the spots that are really scratched up, I'm just gonna go through and add that rip look. And then I think I'm just gonna do one last layer, a sixth one, and then maybe go on the inside a little bit more. And there we are, we have a rip effect all the way done. And then what I do is just turn off that background layer, or you can keep it on, it doesn't really matter. If you wanna have a clip laid before it, you can go ahead and do it. Uh, if not, if you want to have a clip lay underneath it so you can see it moving, or you can just keep the black, black background layer on, uh, it doesn't matter. But I go ahead and file save. But I go ahead and file save it as a PSD, and then I just import that whole PSD into Premiere. I find it's the easiest way, so you don't have to export the uh, export it frame by frame. So I'm just going to name this full Then go into Premiere, find where you save that PSD, import it. And this is important when it says import as, make sure you click individual layers and then check all the ones that are hidden. And if it's given you, if it ever gives you a hard time importing it, I just turn on all the, uh, the layers so they're all visible and then go ahead and import it and then just click individual layers. And then since all the layers are checked, it should be there. And then you see you have all of the, layer, the layers. So then I'm just gonna go to the last frame in our clip where it matches, drag that white frame in because this is gonna be throughout the whole thing. Then I'm gonna go to the scratch and go one, two, three. You can go like three frames, five frames, whatever you think looks best. I think I'm gonna do three per one and then two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Drag in the fourth one, one, two, three, fifth one, one, two, three, the sixth one. 
you can clip that and you can see that effect looks pretty cool already but it just is missing a little bit and it looks a little plain so what you you can go ahead and do is nest the sequence and then what i do is go to the effects controls keyframe position scale and rotation and go one two three and right before the third one actually on the second frame i'm going to re-keyframe and then go to the next frame scale in you can do like 105 you position it so it fits him a little bit better we add a little bit of rotation like 0.3 then go one two one two and then add the keyframe go to the third one where it changes so basically you're adding a keyframe that changes on the frame where it starts coming in and on the frame before it you're just keyframing the last value so it doesn't actually move then you can go 109 or something 0.5 a little bit more crop one two keyframe 112 one two add the keyframes go to the frame where it adds extra stuff 115. I'm going to go negative this time, negative 0.3. Move this a little bit. 1, 2. Add the keyframes. 117. And then maybe like 0.1 again. And then you got this little paper rip and it like kind of like jitters in each time. I know the way he does it, it's like a smooth effect, but I uh, I just wanted to add my own little twist to it. He added some shake there, or like this one, I feel like it's just a pretty smooth zoom in. So you could do that. You could just keyframe right from the beginning. But I like the way that looks. I like how it uh, like jitters in, kind of like it's a piece of paper shaking. Like each time you're scanning it over, or taking a picture of it, it's uh, like jittering in. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the effect. If you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. Be sure to follow my Discord, my Instagram, uh, all my socials. They will be linked below. I'm trying to interact with you guys more, show you a little bit more of my personality. It's a little hard to do in tutorials. I'm kind of like serious, just focusing in on the effect but uh if you guys want to get to know me a little bit more definitely click the links below if you want the paper textures that were used in this video go to my website brindalmata.com and check out my texture pack it's a great way for you to support the channel as well as get some really high quality assets so i do appreciate everyone that does that if you haven't already liked comment and subscribe but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the video peace